guys um back again with some more content um <laughs> so today i just wanted to kind of share with you guys my weight loss journey story and um kind of more so get into the details of like what my journey is how did i get here but most importantly like the tools that i've used um, and the methods that I've used to help me get to where I am today. I would say that my weight loss journey really started, honestly, like in Florida. Like when I moved back to Florida, I feel like that's when I was, um, when I moved to Florida was when it like really became serious. Honestly, I don't know where the shift happened. Um, I lived in New York for, for some time in college and I, and I gained weight for many different reasons, like sleepless nights. <laughs> endless projects like um relationships and just so much right and just not even really um necessarily taking the steps needed i don't think i was working out like seriously like that um and i was actually an athlete in high school but in college like other things were you know taking more taking more so of my time than working out and like i really put my health on the back burner um, especially with the demand with school and things. So um, when I moved to Florida, though, w for my MBA, like they were, there were less classes, but they were very intense. But since there were less classes, there was a little bit more time. And the school there had like a fully compact gym. And I was like, I'm here. I might as well take this opportunity to, you know, make it something. Um, so I actually went through um, identifying like, okay, just doing some research and figuring out, okay, what about my body? Because I, I literally had a stubborn body. Like I had had years before of like trying different things and nothing was necessarily working. The paleo diet. Now I actually gained weight on the paleo diet. Um, like all these different diets, gluten-free. Gluten-free actually worked for me, but I was just – it wasn't like necessarily sustainable in my lifestyle and stuff. So that was really important to me to pick something that I could work with long time that was more so a lifestyle than just like a diet change. And I fell on this book called um, The Fat Burning Bible. Um, it was actually a book that I got from, uh, so the school that I went to, Nova Southeastern University, they have a, um, like a wellness and like um, training program there so there were a lot of students that were in fitness and like you know training uh, for fitness and things like that um, so the people that I talked to around there really led me and just the, the the resources that the library had led me to that book and so I discovered that for me creating a diet lifestyle and a fitness lifestyle that was surrounded around increasing my metabolism was very important um and that's really what that book uh talks about so it's like it's a that book literally changed my life um i will share the like the amazon details and things like that for it if you guys want to check it out i am in no way like a fitness expert or whatever i am a regular regular girl who just <laughs> wanted to try something new for her stubborn body so like I'm just sharing with you guys what worked with me and that book really helped me lose like the first 30 pounds in my in my journey so when I came to Florida I was around like 215 uh 215 pounds and so that first year I lost about like 25 to 30 pounds the time I was there was a two-year program then what happened was Cote d'Ivoire, my, my family trip, we went to visit my dad in Cote d'Ivoire, and, like, I wanted to get swimsuit ready, okay? So I did, um, by that time, I was probably around 180, like, 5-ish or something like that, around there. And um, so I actually went on this, like, 14-day super crazy diet, um, and... I got to like 175 for that trip and like I mean it was amazing body was banging it was great um, but now here's the problem right like whenever you're doing those kind of like fast result um, diet and exercise plans like they come back to bite you right 
um, because they're not sustainable. And, and I mean, there are seasons and times where you might need that. You might need like a quick something and you won't, don't mind it coming back. But like, I mean, I mind it and I didn't know that. So um, when I came back from Cote d'Ivoire, and the reason why, like, I actually didn't gain weight in Cote d'Ivoire, I stayed the same weight because the food there, the food there is just much more natural, you know, I mean, it's nothing compared to, like, food in America. So I could actually eat, I was eating, okay, and I gained, like, no weight. I gained weight when I came back to America. So came back to America, I actually went all the way back to like 185, 187, I believe. And since then, so this is like the second year in Florida, since then, it had been an issue for me to come out of 187. So for like the next, when was Florida? Florida, I came back in 2019. So from like 2019, the summer of 2019, till the end of 2020 so about a year i was literally in a plateau for the longest time and i could not get myself out of it i i actually stopped using the fat burning bible um because of the fact that i wanted to try something else i wanted to try something um i was like i had given up pork for a while during that time and i didn't want to delve into too much dairy and that book gives a really well-rounded like um nutritional recipes in every area right so like your carbs your fats and things like that and i didn't necessarily want to go through the trouble of trying to figure out how to substitute everything so i just really just did my own thing and that definitely contributed to the to the plateaus like i wasn't really following a plan um fast forward uh come back in i actually went to gold's gym and went through their fitness training program with compel fitness and you know they had made this promise that they have a the diet plan and they have like a training plan that they have too and you'll get this and this result let me tell you i went through their training plan i think for like about three months nothing changed nothing changed i was following their plan so strictly you know, and I'm just like, what is happening? I'm wasting my money. Nothing is going on. So um, that was dead end too. And I think I just got to a place where I was just like, you know what? Let me try this fat burning Bible again, the plants in there, because it worked the first time. Um, I would say that the difference now was um, I actually landed on trying the 1200 calorie plan with the macros that are included in the plan and that just like changed the whole game for me i like i got out of the 187 plateau um so since the end of 2020 till now i'm currently at 179 and the whole idea is that um i really favor losing weight at a slower pace at a more consistent pace about two to three pounds a month because that it's going to stay like I'm I'm looking for sustainability I'm looking for a lifestyle change I'm looking for when I get to my goal like to actually stay there and not be you know bouncing up and down in weight so yeah so I mean that's like the whole story coming up to now and I would say that the things that I've learned is um for me it's especially like since my body is very stubborn I need a plan right I need to like when people say, oh, you don't have to measure your food and stuff like that. I think different things work for different people. For me, I know that whenever I didn't and I just winged it, like I would either stay around the same weight or I, yeah, I would stay around the same weight. Like I would rarely gain because I'm, I'm in the habit now where I know the good things to eat. But if I'm just winging things, like it just, it doesn't move. But when I'm very intentional about, okay, like measuring my food and knowing exactly what, what goes into my body, that's when I start to see change. Um, and also the types of workouts that I do, right, because my goal is to um, lose weight through building muscle. Um, so, like, I also have formed a strategic plan to do that because I don't want to get to my goal weight and, like, be soft. That's not my desire. Like, I actually one day want to compete as a bodybuilder. So, like, 
And I mean, aside from that, I just, I like looking strong. I like feeling strong. Um, so I'm not necessarily like in the whole soft girl vibes. Like, nah, sis, like we need to see some muscle. Okay. We need to see that we doing something. Um, and to be honest, that kind of like applies in everything in life, right? Like when you have a plan and your goals are actually measurable, then that's when you start to see results. Like when you're winging it, uh, it, may, it may not work. It worked for some people, didn't work for me, for me, for my goal to see continuous weight loss, right? Like, so um, that's something that I learned too, was that sticking to a plan was going to be super, super important when it came to like nutrition. Um, and another thing too that I, that I learned was um, definitely not doing too much cardio and I'll show you guys like how I actually plan my my workout week um, and all of these things are trial and error right like that's another thing that I've learned too in this weight loss journey is that you know you can always take advice from other people you can take wisdom from other people but your body is your own and you will literally not know what works for you until you try it out and I feel like that was also a frustration for me to be honest, I just wanted somebody to tell me what to do, and I'll do it, and I want to see results from it, right? Um, and, <laughs> like, that didn't work. And especially, like, if you're in a space right now where, like, you want to see results, but you don't necessarily have the funds for, like, a trainer or the funds for somebody to just tell you what to do, and that's it. You got to go through that time to figure it out yourself. So that's what I had to do. I had to, like, figure it out myself. So here's how I set up my workouts for the week. As I mentioned before, I like to do cardio um, maybe twice a week. And the first one is actually like total body cardio and it's cardio that would be that would have weights involved. So that's what I do on Mondays. I do total body workout on Mondays. On Tuesdays, I do um, chest and triceps. On Wednesdays, I do cardio. And on Thursdays is my rest day. And Fridays, I do legs and glutes. And then Saturday, I do back and biceps. And then on top of that, um, just advice from a friend to something that I'm trying is doing Pilates um, or, or an ab workout three to four times a week. So that's this little arc shape that I have. My total workout time is around 45 minutes a day. My goal is to do abs for 15 to 20 minutes each time. Um, so I would just add that on top of my 30 minute workout. So my workout ends out being, you know, 45 to about 50 minutes um, when I add in abs. So since we're in March, we have some new, not necessarily new fitness goals. We have, you know, I always do like a, a check in um, to check in on my weight, check in on my progress. Um, checking on my goals. So I'll actually take you guys through that process and how I use the fat burning Bible to really measure things like my body fat percentage, the calorie intake that I should be taking, um, and other things that are very important. Like how do I actually set my goals? Um, how do I actually know that, oh, I want to be at 170 or whatnot? So um, we'll actually go through that process about now. So here's what you want to do. You want to first take your measurements, and that is your hip measurements, your height measurements, your waist measurements, and your weight in pounds. And then what you want to do next is you want to multiply your hips measurements in inches by 1.4. Then take that number and minus it by 1. And that's going to be your first number, which is uh, going to stand for the letter A. Then in the second step, you want to multiply your waist in inches by 0 0.72 and subtract 2 from that, and that's going to be B. Then in the third step, you want to add A plus B, and that's going to equal C. So the number that you get is going to be C. Then um, in the fourth step, you're going to multiply your height in inches times 0 0.61 and this is going to be D. In your last step, what you're gonna do is you're gonna subtract the number that you got that stands for D from the number that stands for C and subtract that total amount from 10. 
subtract 10 from that total amount. And that ends up being your body fat percentage. My goal right now, and literally how I determined my goal, I literally just Googled what is an acceptable body fat percentage for female bodybuilders. That's, that's exactly what I did. Um, and Google was shooting around like 20%. Um, I like to have a little bit of fat on my body. I'm not sure. So since I'm still guessing around, I don't know what I will look like around here. I just need to be able to have a number, right? Like a goal in my head to aim for. So right now I have my goal body fat percentage to be around 22 to 27 percent of body fat. Now the next thing that you want to do if you really want to have like a number attached instead of a percentage attached to the percent of fat that's in your body, here's a calculation that you can do to identify in pounds how much fat you have uh, versus lean muscle. So what you want to do is you actually want to take your total weight in pounds and you want to multiply it by the body fat percentage. And that's going to equal your total pounds in fat. So for me, I have 62.2 pounds in fat. And then to calculate the total pounds of lean muscle that you have, you want to take that total weight, um, your original total weight, minus the total pounds of fat that you just calculated. And that's going to equal your lean muscle, right? So of course, um, what is not fat in your body ends up being the muscle. So that's just the subtraction part. So I actually have 116 pounds, 116.8 uh, pounds of lean muscle. So if I wanted to have absolutely no fat in my body, which is not healthy, if I wanted to see that big head nyaw that I was talking about, then I would be uh I would go for 117 pounds. We not trying to do that. So um this is great because it just gives me an idea in my head, you know, where possibly I want to land. Um I definitely want to trim off at I don't know, like maybe half-ish of that total body fat. But again, that's why I have all of these numbers to compare to, right? Um, seeing as my goal body fat percentage is around 20 to 27%. And I'm also seeing that currently I have si about 62 pounds of body fat. So I'm going to, you know continue to track those numbers and make sure that, you know, I have these goals in my mind so I know what I'm working towards. Once you've been in a plateau for a year, like you're you're over it, you're over it. So um, I'm just so happy that like we have passed the 80s. We started off this month at 179 pounds. Um, my I I would say that my my total fitness goal is around the 70s, and I'm saying around because I don't necessarily know what I look like in the 70s. I know that in high school, like, when I was skinny, skinny, I had a big head. So it's like, I, I want a weight that matches my head, okay? And, uh, yeah. So, and I don't want to look like I'm starving. I feel like I look a little too small, you know, a little too small. As for, like, my meal plan, I really follow the meals that are inside the book. I, um, before I was at, um... 1,500 plan, like the years that I was in Florida that helped me get to the 30 pounds. But when I was in a plateau, one of the things I realized was that I really did have to cut my calories like a major as well. So um, it wasn't until I did the 1,200 plan when I tried it that I was like, oh, okay, this is the plan that's actually helping me get out of my plateau. Um, I love the meal plans in here. They're very sustainable. Um, they're very fulfilling, so it's not like I'm starving because your girl needs to eat. I don't know how many times I have to say this. I love food, so I'm not looking at it, staring at my plate like there's just celery sticks and, like, tomatoes or something and hummus. No, the food is actually really, really good. Um, and there's also room for variety, right? Like, as long as um, you're making sure that you're calculating, like, if you're substituting something for something else in the meal plan, make sure that it's calculated around the same um, macros, right? So you're not, you know, substituting something that's way off the actual ca um, caloric intake or the macros that are listed inside of the plan. And that's the good thing. Like, 
each meal plan tells you actually the calories and the macros that are in there so you can if you did want to switch it up you can say okay as long as i'm reaching this many proteins by the end of the day or this amount of you know fats or this amount of carbs like you'll be able to know that and yeah so um that's really like my fitness story that's what i do to you know measure my goals every month and i'm sharing with you guys so y'all can hold me accountable <laughs> because now that it's out there it's out there so so you know um i definitely i have someone who's gonna be uh holding me accountable now and i will definitely hold y'all accountable share with me what your fitness goals are what are you guys hoping for this year let's you know really go out and chase our goals let's not just make it a new year's resolution thing and then nothing let's actually make a plan so this is my plan i hope it helps you guys um, try and figure out your plan. I really encourage that book. Um, it's an old school book, but like, I mean, there's nothing better than old school. So, uh, yeah, I think that's all I have for you guys. Um, and I'll keep you posted on uh, the types of workouts that I love to do. And um, you'll probably see more of that later on. But thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, take care. Bye.